undetected through the bleak North Sea, ships of the Royal Navy steam silently toward two Nazi-held Norwegian islands. Aboard are commandos, the hard-hitting British blitz troops. All night, hand grenade fuses are set, for dawn will bring lightning landing thrusts at strategic Nazi bases. German alarm flares splash the night. The commandos are sighted. Aboard each ship, tense men count ticking time while naval guns beat out the landing barrage. Onward, commandos. 8.30 a.m., but the Arctic day is still dark, hiding the black-clad British daredevil. At 9, cold dawn commandos take positions memorized through weeks of steady rehearsals. First assignment on the commandos timetable is explosion of the Nazi munitions dump. In the harbor, German supply ships beach themselves. Eight are easy targets for the British destroyers. Commando field radios direct the island-wide sweep. There are barely five hours of daylight in which to wipe out the whole Nazi nest. The barracks housing the garrison of 200 Nazis is target number two. No photograph, says the German sign, but here is the picture record of a Blitz British style. Nazi land batteries are seized. Commandos have long rehearsed firing each type German gun, and they use them now. One Nazi officer is the first casualty. A ranking Hun commander is carried to a commando invasion boat as a prize prisoner. On split-second timing, other units move down a narrow fjord to Bosco Island, the principal objective. With the first commando firing, startled Norwegians rush to their doors to shout locations of Nazi sniping posts and the village whines with bullets. The amazed Germans are quickly overcome. Reading Mein Kampf, the long Norwegian nights, they had not learned about these British commandos. Did their Fuhrer not know? Nine Quislings, earmarked for capture, are quickly brought in. Norwegian villagers saw that they were found. The village hotel, long since private quarters for the three German officers, used valuable plans and codes. Then. score is 200 Nazi dead and wounded. A high-powered German radio station destroyed. Munitions and oil stores blown up. British casualties are light. A few commandos wounded. At three in the afternoon, destroyer smoke screens cover the British departure. This is but one exploit of the commandos. Freezing somewhere in Russia, Adolf Hitler has his own reports of other sudden raids of other captured flags, of other things to come, as the United Allies point to victory. Working as prisoners in their own factories, forced to supply their enemies with more ammunition, we felt for them. It made the whole affair seem doubly worthwhile, for all of them had the look of prisoners receiving an unexpected reprieve. It's time now we were leaving, for this is strictly a hit-and-run race. We are only lightly armed, but we do have the new and very interesting landing boats. They're an improved model of the barges Adolf thought he was going to use for invading England. The barges the RAF smashed up in the Channel ports. We found ours very handy little vessels for a job such as we have. They put our men safely ashore and brought them safely back. What more could we ask? Well, we did ask one more thing. That was to get back safely over that long thousand miles of rolling Atlantic still between us and England. 
drop going above, but the watch below already is checking off souvenirs. More than one captured swastika is at stake on the turn of a card. The skipper rings for full speed ahead, and full speed ahead is what the black gang gives him. For we're homeward bound, a job done and behind us. And we have the satisfaction now of one more step toward the 